back to The Late Show. Folks, my first guest, Sassoir, is a co-host of the radio show The Breakfast Club. His late-night television show returns this Thursday with a new name, Hell of a Week, with Charlemagne the God. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Charlemagne the God! Nice to see you again. How are you? I'm doing well. That's, see, that's my question to you. The okay. thing I like about you is that you care about people's feelings. You care about mm -hmm. people. And when you ask them that question, I know that you mean it. So let me start with that. How are you, Charlemagne? How am I? I'm doing better than the Choco Taco. Yeah. <laughs> God You're still is, here. That's right. God has not discontinued <laughs> me yet. I am here. <laughs> yes. When were you born? Uh, I was born in 1978. 78. Oh, you're even a few years older than the Choco Taco. Yeah. Yeah. He's 40. Yeah. Oh, wow. You look better, though. Wow. I made it, you look better. I made it farther than the Choco Taco. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's, that's an accomplishment. That right is an there. accomplishment. <laughs> Perspective. Now, Perspective. You, uh, how are you staying optimistic and dealing with your anxiety these days? Because I know that you're very open about your, your, your issues with anxiety, which I, I have as well, yeah. what are you doing to, to function these days? I mean, the same things, you know, therapy, breathing exercises, you know, meditation, edibles. Um, and <laughs> and uh -huh. I think that, you know, pessimism has never won any battles. So those moments when you feel like, you know, chicken little and the sky is falling, you, like your therapist says, you just got to feel your feels, you know? And the sky is falling. Let's be clear on it. <laughs> Doesn't help to deny it. It does not help to deny it. That's the mm -hmm. problem. It feels like, you know, sometimes you'll go crazy because you watch the news and, you know, you, you feel like people aren't speaking to the, uh, the, the the sense of urgency that I feel is at hand. They're not speaking to the urgency of the matter. Do you, Now, have you are you been following the January 6th hearings? Yes. Because there's a sense of urgency there. I'm very... When I watched it, I my first feeling, the first time, the very first saw one, the first primetime one they had uh, a couple months ago, gratitude is what I had, is that there are some people up there who are actually looking at the world with a sense of... Sense of urgency in doing yeah. their job. What do you, what do you, what do you make of them so far? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm skeptical. You know, I hope that the right thing gets done, but I think that you know the media has to stop saying things while well, asking questions like, you know, should Donald Trump be prosecuted for his role in the, uh, the, the uh, uh, insurrection? Like, it's like, no, make a statement. Donald Trump should be prosecuted for his role in the insurrection. Right. You know, because um. I feel like if they don't prosecute him, then, you know, it gives him the opportunity to say, see, another witch hunt. You know, it gives him the opportunity to see, see, they, they keep digging for things, but things aren't there. So if, they're, if they can actually charge him and prosecute him, which it looks like they have the evidence to do, do it. Simple as that. Remember last time I was here? I think it was the last time I was here. I said that was one of the four things that needed to be done uh, to pr protect democracy. You have to prosecute everybody involved in the attempted coup of this country on January 6th. And yeah, there aren't consequences for that. <laughs> what are there consequences for? That's right. Why do we have this system of government? That's right. But you certainly don't let the Democrats off the hook. And I'm, I'm curious what you, what you mean when you say that the Democrats have to be held accountable in this moment. Because, you know, uh, Democrats are in power right now. You know, for the most part, they have the White House. You know, they 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 have the House. They 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 don't technically have the Senate, but it could be a 50-50 for something like getting rid of the filibuster, right? Like they could vote to actually get rid of the filibuster, then they could properly legislate if they could get everybody on board. The Joe Manchin's, Kristen Cinemas, whatever other dinos they have in the party. But if they could get those people, <laughs> that's Democrats in name only, by the way. If, if they, I didn't mean that like old, even though they are old, old and prehistoric, but not that kind of dino. But if they could get everybody in line, they could vote to get rid of the filibuster, then they could probably But how legislate. do you do that? How do you get, like, if Joe Manchin or Kristen Sinema feel like it doesn't butter their bagel to vote in the way the Democrats they want you because might, they're worried about their voters at home. You might have to pull a page out of the guy's name who you don't like to say on this show's book and just shame people. Well, he shamed them by threatening them by saying, we'll, we'll vote you out. So are you willing to lose a couple of senators to eventually... You don't have them now. It's like everybody always says, oh, Joe Manchin, what if he goes to the Republican Party? You don't have him now. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have him now. So I feel like, you know, uh, you, know you, you, get, you, you vote to get rid of the filibuster, then you expand the Supreme Court so you can protect our rights, then you can pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act yep. and the Freedom to Vote Act. Because to me, man, the only thing on the ballot come, uh, you know, the midterms and in 2024 is democracy. I don't know if y'all realize, we're in the end game now. 
Like, mm-hmm. we're, we're literally in the end game now. Thanos is snapped. We just got to figure out a way to go get our own Infinity Stones and bring people back <laughs> at this point. Um, OK, so people are saying, many people out there are saying that uh, President Biden shouldn't run again. And I know you were a Bernie fan, weren't you? Um, not, who who eh, did you like? I like Bernie. Bernie's cool. OK. I didn't really Who'd like nobody. Like? I, don't, I didn't really like nobody, it, you know? Mm-hmm. I think we, we all just did the best we could. Right? I'm a big fan of the four agreements. The last uh, agreement in the four agreements is always do your best. We all just did our best. We did our civic duty, and we went out there and we voted for the person that we thought, you know, could protect our rights. Doesn't look like those rights are being protected all the way right now. Well, that's why I don't like when people, you know, people always say, just vote, just vote, just vote. I absolutely believe in voting. I'm going to always vote. But let's keep in mind, we voted for the people we thought that were going to protect us from you know, the bad guys. And it looks like right now the bad guys are winning. And if you're letting the bad guys win to me, you're complicit, you know? You're guilty by association. Do you really think that they're doing all they can? No, I don't think they're doing all they can. But a lot of the stuff that's actually happening is happening on a federal court level, Mm -hmm. like the Supreme Court. And there's nothing to be done about that until you actually... Uh, have openings on that court. Oh, you Again. are. You get. You vote to get rid of the filibuster, and then you expand the Supreme Court. That's why I always say, <laughs> Democrats have tried every political strategy except for courage. It takes political courage to do those things. Well, this Thursday, over on Comedy Central, yes. my old hogs, uh, your late night show is back for a second season. New yes. name. Hell of a week. Hell of a week. First of all, why that name, Hell of a Week? I mean, look at the times that we're in. I feel like everybody in this room has said that at least... That you say that at least once a week every week. <laughs> you know? I say it's that been a hell of a week. Every day feels like a hell of a week these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like... And it sounds more like a, a weekly talk show. I mean, that's technical TV stuff. But right. You know. So how is this different than uh, the God's Honest Truth? Because we're still going to get the God's Honest Truth, aren't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. I feel like I'm leaning into uh, what I think is more of my strength, which is community. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Which is actually sitting around, having conversations with people. And let's be clear, man, you know, trying to do it alone, that's a lot of heavy lifting. I mean, Jesus. The idea of being on stage alone telling jokes seems impossible. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> we have to take a quick break. When we come back, I will ask Charlemagne about his involvement with a beautiful new museum in Charleston, South Carolina. Stick around. <laughs> 